Many entrepreneurs are racing to be the first into the marketplace with magnetic motors that are built with high-tech space-age materials and employ microprocessors to regulate pulsations and RPM. David Porter of Galtech Semiconductors demonstrates his recently patented permanent magnet motor called the Carousel Electric Generator. This is the latest version of the Carousel Motor Generator. Uh, it's a rotary version. Uh, rotary inside, there's 18 separate sections, what we call a coil section in here. 18 make up the outer diameter. Uh, there's six coils here that we're using to drive the motor. And the top here we have an encoder which sends a pulse down to the electronics and basically lets the electronics know where the rotor, the rotating part here, is in relationship to the coils and tells the coils when to turn on and off. Uh, that's done by a specific index point that the encoder has that sets the relationship between the two. And the electronics down here in the box is basically a set of uh, TTL logic counters. It counts the number of pulses from the encoder and it turns the power on and off to different coils depending on where the rotor is at the time. We have also hooked up to this system a connection to the computer over here. What it gives us the opportunity to do is change the duty cycle on the system. We can change it from a pulse rate of one pulse per cycle up to uh, 40 pulses per cycle, which would be a 100% duty cycle. Uh, that is incorporated in, and what we do is change the pulse rate on the computer. It downloads the data to the electronics. When the index pulse comes around, which comes around once per revolution, it updates the data in the counters, and that's what changes the pulse rate on the system. Okay, we don't have an automatic start on the system right now. That's something that the Intel chip will do. We'll start it up at a pulse rate of approximately 13 pulses, which gives us a 16% duty cycle. It takes a while to spool up, um, because like I say, it works also as its own flywheel. So we build up the power gradually. The thing about this system is, is that everything floats on the magnetic field in there. Uh, you have very little internal friction. Once the system gets up to speed, it stabilizes at a certain RPM. Right now we're running at about a 30% duty cycle per channel. The speed is still coming up a little bit. Calculate the speed off of the scope here and we're running about 1850 RPM. This white and the green shows the two channels on the motor. The little spikes there are the amount of time that each channel is on, and the flat part at the bottom is the amount that it's off. So you can see how much it's pulsing and how much time it's off and how much time it's on. One of the analogies we like to use is it's like uh, if you pick someone up and take them across the street, you use a lot of energy. If you put them in a tire, once you get it started, all you got to do is tap it a little bit. And so you use a lot less energy to move the same load. And that's what we do. We build it up to a high speed, and then we just tap it with a little, with a little juice as it goes around. And we use the inertia built into the system to take it the rest, the rest of the way there. So we're using a, a high-speed pulse on the system. What we're doing is removing the energy from the magnet. The magnet has a specific life. They lose approximately 1% a year. So we're not actually trying to create energy from nothing. The system will not run forever. It's not perpetual motion. Uh, we use the amount of energy that is in the magnets. Once that energy is used up, the magnets can be taken out. They can be recharged. All we're doing is maximizing the efficiency of the electromagnetic flux density that's there.
to the production of electrical output.